What if love were a game, not of winners or losers, but of players willing to risk it all for the grand prize of connection? Imagine stepping onto a chessboard, your heart in your hand, ready to make your move under the soft glow of the moon. Each step, a gamble, each word, a whispered promise of what could be. This, my friends, is the game of love. Just like a puzzle, love can appear complicated, pieces scattered in disarray. But piece by piece, we discover in each other the picture we were meant to complete. It's a leap of faith, a hurdle jumped, a dice rolled, trusting that the fortune revealed will be worth the risk. No room for regret, only room for the joy of connection. As we navigate this maze of emotions, breaking through barriers and unlocking new levels of understanding, our bond grows stronger and deeper. Each challenge faced together is a victory, a testament to our resilience. In the grand arena of love, the end is just the beginning. Each move we make, each risk we take, is a work of art, a testament to our shared journey. Every challenge is a fresh start, an opportunity to grow, to connect, to win together. So, here's a toast to the game of love, where the prize isn't a trophy or a title, but the deep, enduring connection between two souls. An adventure we willingly dive into, knowing that in this game, love always comes out victorious. Remember, in the game of love, it's not about winning or losing, it's about playing the game with all your heart. Because in the end, love always wins. Our journey into the world of love would be incomplete without addressing a common yet often misunderstood emotion. Jealousy. Jealousy, a game often played in love, can indeed be a double-edged sword. On one side, it is a testament to your affection. On the other, it can create a chasm of misunderstanding. Firstly, understanding the root of jealousy is crucial. It often sprouts from insecurities or fear of losing someone dear. Recognize it, accept it, but don't let it consume you. Secondly, let's view jealousy not as a destructive force, but rather as a tool for communication. It's an opportunity to express your feelings, to communicate your fears, and to strengthen your bond. Lastly, create a win-win situation by addressing insecurities. It's about fostering trust, understanding, and open communication. In doing so, you're not just playing the game, you're changing it. In conclusion, jealousy, when understood and addressed, can actually strengthen the bond between two individuals. It's a part of the game of love. And remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, growing, and loving more deeply. So, here's to playing the game of love with all your heart, even when jealousy comes into play. In this labyrinth of love, we often find ourselves at the crossroads of silence, also known as the silent treatment. It's a part of the game, a test of patience and endurance, and like any other game, it has its rules. The silent treatment can be perplexing, frustrating, and sometimes even intimidating. It can make you question your worth and your place in the relationship. But remember, it's just a game, and games are meant to be understood. Understanding the silent treatment is the first step. Often, it's a form of expression, a way of communicating dissatisfaction or hurt without using words. It's not always about punishment or control, but rather about seeking space, time or validation. Secondly, silence doesn't have to be deafening. It can be a platform for understanding, a time to reflect on the situation and your feelings. Look at it as an opportunity, a pause button that allows you to examine the relationship and your role in it. Lastly, breaking the silence is the key. But it's not about who breaks it first, it's about how it's broken. Approach it with understanding, empathy, and a willingness to resolve the issue at hand. In doing so, you're not just ending the silence, you're paving the way for better communication and a deeper connection. In conclusion, silence, when understood and broken with understanding, can lead to stronger bonds and deeper connections. It's a part of the game of love, and remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, growing, and loving more deeply. So here's to playing the game of love with patience and understanding, even when silence comes into play. As we navigate the labyrinth of love, we find ourselves faced with a game that mirrors the complexities of a chessboard, aptly named the game of chessboard love. 
this game is a test of strategy, foresight, and understanding. The chessboard love can be intricate, overwhelming, and sometimes even daunting. It can make you question your decisions and the impacts they have on the relationship. But remember, it's just a game, and games are meant to be understood. Understanding the game of chessboard love is the first step. Often, it's a form of expression, a way of communicating the complexities of love without the need for words. It's not always about winning or losing, but rather about maneuvering through challenges, misunderstandings, and external pressures. Secondly, the chessboard can be seen as a platform for strategic planning, a time to reflect on the situation and your possible moves. Look at it as an opportunity, a chance to examine the relationship and your role in it. Lastly, making the right move is key. But it's not about making the perfect move, it's about making the move that feels right for both players. Approach it with understanding, empathy, and a willingness to work through the complexities. In doing so, you're not just making a move, you're paving the way for better understanding and a deeper connection. In conclusion, the game of chessboard love, when understood and played with understanding, can lead to stronger bonds and deeper connections. It's a part of the game of love, and remember, it's not about winning or losing, it's about understanding, growing, and loving more deeply. So here's to playing the game of love with patience and understanding, even when the complexities of the chessboard come into play. As we journey through the winding maze of love, we may encounter a crossroad, a pause. This is the game of second chances. It's not a game of power, strategy, or manipulation, but one of introspection, growth, and reconciliation. This game can be painful, humbling, and often enlightening. It can make you question your past decisions and the lessons they've taught you. But remember, it's just a game, and games are meant to be understood. Understanding the game of second chances is the first step. Often, it's a form of self-discovery, a way of acknowledging mistakes and learning from them without the harsh glare of blame. It's not always about regret or guilt, but rather about growth understanding, and the courage to love again. Secondly, this game can be seen as a platform for personal growth, a time to reflect on your past actions and the changes you need to make. Look at it as a challenge, a chance to examine your actions and their impact on the relationship. Lastly, making the decision to give love a second chance is key. But it's not about repeating the same mistakes, it's about making new choices with more wisdom and emotional maturity. Approach it with understanding, empathy, and a willingness to change. In doing so, you're not just giving love a second chance. You're paving the way for a stronger relationship and a deeper connection. In conclusion, the game of second chances, when understood and played with maturity, can lead to stronger bonds and deeper connections. It's a part of the game of love and remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, growing, and loving more deeply. So here's to playing the game of love with patience and understanding, even when second chances come into play. As we continue our journey through love's vast maze, we now stumble upon the game of balancing dreams. This game isn't about power struggles or second chances, but about synergy, understanding, and mutual respect. Here, Love isn't just about sharing life, but also about sharing dreams. In this game, we meet Alex and Jamie, two individuals with their own professional ambitions. They're both successful in their fields, but their journey isn't without its challenges. This is where the game begins. Alex, an ambitious entrepreneur, is passionate about his startup. He works long hours, fueled by his dream to make it big. On the other hand, Jamie, a talented artist, wishes to make her mark on the world with her art. She spends her days immersed in her paintings, driven by her desire to express herself creatively. The game of balancing dreams is about understanding and respecting each other's individual aspirations, while also working together towards a shared future. It's about creating a balance between personal ambitions and the relationship, ensuring neither is compromised. Firstly, this game requires open communication Alex and Jamie need to discuss their dreams, their plans, and their fears. They need to understand that their individual dreams are as important as their shared ones. Secondly, they need to support each other. 
Alex might need to attend an art exhibition with Jamie, while Jamie might need to understand when Alex has to work late. Supporting each other's dreams is a way of showing love and respect. Lastly, it's about compromise. There might be times when one has to sacrifice a bit for the other. But remember, it's not about losing oneself in the relationship. It's about finding a balance that works for both. In conclusion, the game of balancing dreams when played with understanding and respect can lead to a relationship that's not just about love, but also about shared dreams and aspirations. So here's to playing the game of love with patience, understanding, and balancing dreams. As we make our way through the complex labyrinth of love, we find ourselves standing at the precipice of the game of love's ultimate test. This game is not about power struggles nor balancing dreams, but about trust, resilience, and the strength of their bond. Here, love faces a crucial test that has the potential to make or break the relationship. In this game, we find Alex and Jamie at a crossroads. A lucrative job offer has come Alex's way, but it requires him to move to a different city. Jamie, on the other hand, has just been offered a solo exhibition at a renowned gallery, a dream she has been chasing for years, but it requires her to stay. This is where the game begins. The game of love's ultimate test is about making tough decisions that could potentially alter the course of their relationship. It's about trusting in the strength of their bond and believing in each other. Firstly, they need to communicate to express their fears, their dreams, and their desires. They need to understand the gravity of the situation and what it means for their future. Secondly, they need to reflect on all they have learned about love and each other. They need to remember the balance they struck in their dreams, the power struggles they overcame, and the respect they have for one another. Lastly, they need to make a decision, a decision that respects their individual dreams, but also honors their shared love. This game isn't about winning or losing. It's about understanding, adapting, and growing. It's about trusting in the strength of their bond and in their love for each other. In conclusion, the game of love's ultimate test, when faced with love, trust, and resilience, can lead to a stronger, more resilient relationship. So, here's to playing the game of love with courage, trust, and an unwavering belief in each other. In the grand tapestry of love, we now arrive at the game of choices. After the ultimate test of love, Alex and Jamie stand before a new challenge. This game is not about power struggles nor silent treatments, but about the choices they make every day. These choices may seem insignificant, but they hold immense power. They have the ability to either strengthen their bond or tear it apart. In this game, Alex and Jamie find themselves at a critical juncture. They have weathered the storm of the ultimate test. They have made their decisions and now they must live with them. Alex chose to take the job, and Jamie chose to stay for her exhibition. They chose their dreams, but they also chose each other. They chose to maintain a long-distance relationship, to support each other's dreams, and to continue to grow together, albeit apart. This game is about understanding that choices have consequences, and every decision impacts their relationship. It's about choosing love, even when it's not the easiest choice. It's about choosing to communicate, even when it's easier to stay silent. It's about choosing trust, even when doubts creep in. But most importantly, it's about choosing each other every single day. In conclusion, the game of choices is about understanding that love is a choice. It's about choosing each other, choosing love, and choosing to work through the challenges. So, here's to playing the game of love with courage resilience, and an unwavering commitment to each other. As we travel through the complex course of love, we now pause for the game of reflections. After making their choices and before they step into the arena of power struggles, Alex and Jamie find themselves in a tranquil moment of introspection. In this game, they look back at their journey, acknowledging the trials they have faced, the lessons they have learned, and the growth they have experienced. As they sit together, they recall their initial days of innocent love, the puzzle of understanding each other, navigating the maze of emotions and the grand arena of their love. They toast to their love, remember the pang of jealousy, the silence that spoke volumes, and the chessboard of love where every move mattered. 
they reflect on the second chances they gave each other, balancing their dreams, the ultimate test of their love, and the choices they made. This game isn't about making a move or facing a challenge, but about understanding the journey they've been on. It's about appreciating the love they share, a love that has withstood the test of time and adversity. It's about acknowledging that while love is the most complex game they've ever played, it's also the most rewarding. As they reflect, they find a renewed sense of commitment to each other and to their shared future. They are ready for whatever game life throws their way, emphasizing the book's message that love, in all its unpredictability and complexity, is worth all the challenges it presents. So, here's to playing the game of love with reflection, understanding, and a renewed commitment to each other. In our journey through the labyrinth of love, we often stumble upon the game of power struggle. It's a familiar game, a test of ego, a battle of wills. Power struggles can be intense, confusing, and sometimes even destructive. They can make you question your importance and your influence in the relationship. But remember, it's just a game, and games are meant to be understood. Understanding the power struggle is the first step. Often, it's a form of expression, a way of communicating dominance or influence without using force. It's not always about control or superiority, but rather about seeking validation, respect, or equality. Secondly, power struggles can be turned into opportunities for compromise. They can serve as a platform for negotiation, a time to reflect on the situation and your desires. Look at it as a challenge, a chance to examine the relationship and your role in it. Lastly, creating a win-win situation by balancing power is key. But it's not about who has more power. It's about how it's balanced. Approach it with understanding, empathy, and a willingness to compromise. In doing so, you're not just ending the power struggle, you're paving the way for mutual respect and a deeper connection. In conclusion, power struggles, when understood and balanced, can lead to stronger bonds and mutual respect. They're a part of the game of love. And remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, growing, and loving more deeply. So here's to playing the game of love with patience and understanding, even when power struggles come into play. As we continue navigating the complex maze of love, we inevitably encounter the game of blame. It's a destructive game, a test of responsibility, a manifestation of resentment. The blame game can erode trust, create rifts, and lead to a downward spiral in relationships. But remember, like every other game, it can be understood and transformed. Understanding the blame game is the first step. Often, it's a form of defense, an attempt to protect oneself from guilt or failure. It's not about truth or justice, but about evading responsibility and shifting focus. However, blame can be turned into opportunities for accountability. Instead of pointing fingers, we can use these moments to introspect, to understand our actions and their consequences. Look at it as a challenge, an opportunity to grow and improve as individuals and as partners. Creating a win-win situation by sharing responsibility is the key. It's not about who's wrong or right, it's about how we learn from our mistakes and grow together. Approach it with humility, empathy, and a willingness to accept your flaws. By doing so, you're not just ending the blame game, you're fostering a culture of understanding and growth. In conclusion, the game of blame, when replaced with accountability, can lead to personal growth and a stronger bond. They're a part of the game of love. And remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about learning, growing, and loving more deeply. So, here's to playing the game of love with humility and accountability, even when the game of blame rears its head. As we tread further into the labyrinth of love, we stumble upon the game of comparison. It's a tricky game, a test of self-worth, a mirror reflecting our insecurities. The comparison game can gnaw at our self-esteem, breed discontentment, and create a toxic environment in relationships. But fear not, for every game has a silver lining. Understanding the comparison game is the first step towards dissolving it. Often it's a reflection of our own insecurities, a desperate attempt to measure up to an imaginary standard. It's not about superiority or inferiority, but about acceptance and self-love. The key lies in transforming comparison into an opportunity for appreciation. Instead of comparing, use these moments to appreciate the uniqueness of your partner. 
to celebrate the differences that make your bond special. View it as a chance to grow, to understand your partner and yourself better. Create a win-win scenario by embracing the unique qualities of each other. It's not about who's better or worse, it's about understanding that each individual is unique and irreplaceable. Approach it with open-mindedness, love and a willingness to celebrate uniqueness. By doing so, you're not just ending the comparison game, you're cultivating a culture of acceptance and self-love. In conclusion, the game of comparison, when replaced with appreciation, can lead to self-love and a deeper understanding of your partner. It's a part of the game of love. And remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, appreciating, and loving more deeply. So, let's play the game of love with appreciation and acceptance, even when the game of comparison tries to sneak in. As we delve deeper into the complexities of love, we encounter the game of keeping score. It's a common game, a test of forgiveness, a tally of past mistakes. This game can lead to resentment, create a barrier of guilt, and hinder the growth of relationships. But as with every game, there's a way to turn it around. Understanding the game of keeping score is the first step toward dissolving it. Often it's a reflection of our inability to forgive, a desperate attempt to hold on to past mistakes. It's not about who's right or wrong, but about forgiveness and moving forward. The key lies in transforming the game of keeping score into opportunities for forgiveness. Instead of keeping score, use these moments to forgive your partner, to let go of the past mistakes that are holding your relationship back. View it as a chance to grow, to understand your partner and yourself better. Create a win-win scenario by embracing forgiveness. It's not about who's made the most mistakes. It's about understanding that we all make mistakes and that forgiveness is the key to moving forward. Approach it with open-mindedness, love, and a willingness to forgive. By doing so, you're not just ending the game of keeping score, you're cultivating a culture of forgiveness and growth. In conclusion, the game of keeping score, when replaced with forgiveness, can lead to peace and a deeper understanding of your partner. It's a part of the game of love, and remember, it's not about winning or losing, it's about understanding, forgiving and loving more deeply. So let's play the game of love with forgiveness, even when the game of keeping score tries to sneak in. As we further navigate the labyrinth of love, we stumble upon the game of manipulation, a dangerous game that can be a true test of trust. This game can breed suspicion, sow the seeds of doubt, and can potentially destroy relationships. However, like every game, there's a way to flip it. Understanding the game of manipulation is the first step in countering it. Often, it's a manifestation of our insecurities, a desperate attempt to control the other person. It's not about who's in control, but about honesty and mutual respect. The key lies in transforming the game of manipulation into opportunities for honesty. Instead of manipulating, use these moments to be honest with your partner, to let go of the fear of losing control. View it as a chance to be transparent, to understand your partner and yourself better. Create a win-win scenario by promoting transparency. It's not about who's in control. It's about understanding that we all have insecurities and that honesty is the key to overcoming them. Approach it with an open heart, love, and a willingness to be transparent. By doing so, you're not just ending the game of manipulation, you're fostering a culture of honesty and growth. In conclusion, the game of manipulation, when replaced with honesty, can lead to trust and a deeper understanding of your partner. It's a part of the game of love, and remember, it's not about winning or losing, it's about understanding, being honest, and loving more deeply. So, let's play the game of love with honesty, even when the game of manipulation tries to creep in. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of love, we encounter the game of assumptions. This common game in love can often become a test of communication. Assumptions are the hidden traps in a relationship, the silent killers of trust and understanding. They are often based on our fears, insecurities, and past experiences. But just like every other game, there's a way to turn it around. Understanding the game of assumptions is the first step towards countering it. Instead of assuming, use these moments to seek clarification, to communicate with your partner. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's about understanding and respecting each other's perspectives. The key lies in transforming the game of assumptions into opportunities for clarification. Create a win-win scenario 
by promoting open communication. It's not about proving a point. It's about understanding that we all have different perspectives and that open communication is the key to understanding them. Approach it with an open mind, love, and a willingness to communicate. By doing so, you're not just ending the game of assumptions, you're fostering a culture of understanding and growth. In conclusion, the game of assumptions, when replaced with open communication, can lead to a deeper understanding of your partner. It's a part of the game of love. And remember, it's not about winning or losing. It's about understanding, communicating, and loving more deeply. So let's play the game of love with open communication, even when the game of assumptions tries to sneak in. As we journey further into the realm of love, we come face to face with the game of expectations. This prevalent game in love often becomes a litmus test of acceptance. Expectations are the invisible strings that can either bind us in harmony or tangle us in discord. They are usually based on our desires, hopes and anticipations. But just as every other game, there's a way to navigate it. Understanding the game of expectations is the first step towards handling it. Instead of expecting, use these moments to embrace acceptance, to appreciate your partner as they are. It's not about who conforms or rebels. It's about accepting and cherishing each other's individuality. The key is in transforming the game of expectations into opportunities for acceptance. Cultivate a win-win situation by promoting unconditional love. It's not about setting standards. It's about understanding that we are all unique and that acceptance is the key to cherishing that uniqueness. Approach it with an open heart, love, and a readiness to accept. In doing so, you're not just ending the game of expectations, you're nurturing a culture of acceptance and unconditional love. To conclude, the game of expectations, when replaced with acceptance, can pave the way to unconditional love. It's a part of the game of love, and remember, it's not about conforming or rebelling, it's about accepting, cherishing, and loving unconditionally. So let's play the game of love with acceptance, even when the game of expectations tries to take center stage. As we delve deeper into the labyrinth of love, we encounter the game of control. This ubiquitous game can often become a test of freedom. Control, like invisible chains, can either bind us in a restrictive embrace or liberate us when we learn to navigate it correctly. They are usually based on our insecurities, fears, and the desire to mold circumstances to our liking. But like every other game, there's a way to navigate it. Recognizing the game of control is the first step towards dismantling it. Instead of seeking control, use these moments to promote freedom, to appreciate your partner's individuality. It's not about who dominates or succumbs. It's about respecting and celebrating each other's autonomy. The key is in transforming the game of control into opportunities for freedom. Cultivate a win-win situation by promoting individuality and mutual respect. It's not about imposing wills, it's about understanding that we are all unique and that respect is the key to honoring that uniqueness. Approach it with an open heart, love and a readiness to respect. In doing so, you're not just ending the game of control, you're fostering a culture of respect and individual freedom. To conclude, the game of control, when replaced with freedom, can pave the way to genuine respect and individuality. It's a part of the game of love and remember, it's not about dominating or succumbing. It's about respecting, celebrating, and loving freely. So let's play the game of love with respect, even when the game of control tries to take center stage. Thank you so much for watching the Lifestyle Bliss channel. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. It really helps the channel grow. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll know exactly when a new video is posted. Your support means the world to us, and we're excited to bring you even more great content. Until next time, stay inspired and keep exploring towards a more win-win, fulfilling and blissful lifestyle with us. Bless your hearts and see you in the next video. Playful dance in the moon's soft glow Whispered words feeling start to flow A chessboard set with moves to make Each step a gamble we willingly take In the games of love Our hopes are